You're listening to JFDI with the two Lauras. And in this episode, we are going to break down how Adele has just launched her new album. We're going to take you through every single step that she has taken because there's a marketing lesson in it all. I'm talking about the two Lauras. They'll be your biggest supporters. What the selling you'll need more of. I'm talking about the two Lauras. I'm talking about the two Lauras. Hello, it's me. I don't know the rest of the words, I'm afraid. Good, I think our listeners will be pretty pleased about that, to be fair. I'm rude. Um, so yeah, the reason we are here today and the reason that Laura Davis is singing Adele badly, I have to say, um, <sighs> sorry, harsh, is because I think the whole world pretty much has noticed that Adele has made a massive comeback. And we felt like there was a lot of lessons that we as social media pros could learn from Adele. So today's episode is about how you can sell like Adele. I love that name. Sell like Adele. Yeah. So yeah, the the comeback, I think, is probably the first place to start because we can all learn something from, from Adele's comeback. And if you are listening and you're thinking, oh my God, I haven't posted on my own socials, my business socials for ages... Can we just show you that Adele has just made a massive comeback? We've not heard a song from her for ages. And yes, we were all sitting on the edge of our seats waiting, but there may well be someone sitting on the edge of their seats waiting for you to post on your socials too. (laughs) So (laughs) go do it. Yeah. And I think it's worth saying, obviously, we would recommend that you don't all disappear and try and make an Adele comeback. But, you know, life happens, doesn't it? And sometimes we do end up taking a break for whatever reason. And then, then the fear sets in you know, can I come back? Is anybody still there? All those kind of questions we all ask ourselves. But Adele is a perfect example of if you come back, you just come back and do it well. And we're going to cover some of the ways in which she's done it so well. So yeah, it's totally possible to be reborn. Yeah, you don't have to be an A-lister to be reborn, to to come back on socials. Definitely not. Or to come back in your business if you've had a bit of time out. We can all make this work. So yeah. where should we start? Like Adele has done so many things right. And I think we can learn from them all, maybe on a slightly smaller scale with a little bit less of a budget. But I think we can learn from so many different things. So yeah. where, where should we start? The thing that I really noticed on her, those first kind of week or so that she came back is she was everywhere. Yeah. So where we always talk about, you know, you've got to be visible, you've got to be seen, like, that was totally her strategy. That is what she was doing. Everywhere you looked, there she was. She was on front covers of Vogue, I think two, wasn't it? And um, which is a new thing, apparently, to be on two. <laughs> and at the same time. And she was on like talk shows, she was all over social media, she was just everywhere. So I think getting out there, being visible and getting in front of other people's audiences is what she's done really well. Yeah, definitely. She's definitely harnessed other people's audiences. But I think even like a step before that, before she did that, she was really good at giving those like sneak peeks. Mm. Like where I remember putting the TV on one morning and there just being like this couple of second clip of her new song coming out and just those little sneak peeks getting all, everyone hyped up that something was, was coming. Like she is amazing at creating FOMO, isn't she? Yeah. And so she did that. She started with the sneak peeks and she got in front of everybody's audiences and... And also influencers, like she's doing a thing with Oprah. So, you know, working with somebody who's really influential, who can make her look really good. And obviously she's going going to make Oprah look really good too. And I'm not saying that, you know, you can go out and (laughs) just go and slide into Oprah's DMs and get her to work. Oh, I was just about to do that. (laughs) Oh, damn. But, you know, I think we could all find our own Oprah to our business who could help us get in front of some really good people and make us look good and we can make them look good too. Yeah, totally. And I think what I love, again, about the last kind of month or whenever it is that she's launched, she obviously is very good at singing, like clearly, nearly as good as me. But what people love about her is her personality and she knows that. So she made sure she got her personality out there. Like she went live, didn't she, and did that just like live Q&A what appeared to be completely kind of off the cuff whether it was or not I don't know but it was just brilliant to be able to see her be herself you know she yeah. she wasn't all dolled up she was just 
being her. And I think there's a massive lesson for all of us in that, in that we all, you know, worry about, you have to be, you know, look professional, but it doesn't have to be like that. You can just show the raw kind of, and obviously she will be put on a little bit of a fr- front because she's a performer. She's not going to you know, completely show the the real her. But I think it's really important that we all kind of learn from that, that you can be this A-list celebrity, but still show people who you really are. You're not just this untouchable person. Well, she is untouchable. You know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So people know what they're going to get. Yeah. They're not just, you're not coming on with this big front and putting a, a persona out there that people think they're buying into. And then when they actually get to know you and they actually start to work with you or buy from you, it's something totally different. Yeah. No one wants that. And I think, yeah, I think you're right. Adele does that really, really well. She's always showing her pro- her true personality, isn't she? Like, even if it's not on social, when she's on telly, when she's in a, a gig or what have you, she's always herself. She never tries to be somebody else. Yeah. Which has obviously done her favours. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. So on that, when I, like I just mentioned that she went live... You don't see it that often. Now, maybe it's because I actually don't follow many kind of celebrities and maybe they all go live, who knows, but I've never really seen that. Now, I didn't actually catch her live. You know, she didn't text me to tell me. <laughs> Slide into your DMs. Laura, I'm going live, to, live later. Do you want to join me? No? <laughs> so I missed it. I'm shocked. So, <laughs> but I saw all the kind of replays of it and stuff. But the fact that she was utilising those kind of functionalities and that is the the best way to show you isn't it is by going live it's not pre-recorded where you've taken five thousand takes is that just me it's totally more authentic (laughs) i don't like that word but it's true so she does really well at doing that yeah definitely and the amount of people who reuse those that content in like reels and things like that as well if you can go live and share some really good tips or what have you, then people are going to share all of that information and knowledge that you've passed on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they may not reuse your your voiceover as a reel, but but they are going to remember you for the information that you've given them and the help that you've given them. And they're going to pass that on and they're going to recommend that other people maybe go and watch your live or come and follow you and what have you. And I think that's gold, isn't it? Oh, totally. Totally. Okay, so we've we've covered a few of the things that Adele's done really well, but let's kind of break down how she's made this comeback and how she's done this launch because this is a launch Mm -hmm. and businesses need to be using launches. And yeah, like there are products that you can sell all of the time and what have you, but let's be clear here, launches work and you kind of need to embrace that launch method of marketing, don't you, to really promote things. No matter how often, you know, even if somebody can buy your product every single day, if you can Mm -hmm. use some sort of launch method, it will always help to sell more stuff. So let's just break down like step by step what she did. So I think the first thing that I saw, and you may have seen something different, but the first thing that I saw was that sneak peek. Yeah, I agree. And it was like the, yeah, I'm coming back. This is this is what you're going to get. And just dripping the seed of that sneak peek, which is obviously a really good thing to do as part of like your sales process and your launch. And then you started to see her everywhere. And like you said, she went live. She was with other people's audiences. She has recorded something with Oprah she's recorded something that's going to be on TV in a couple of weeks and all of that is also being promoted as well then the song came out didn't it and how many people downloaded that song how many times did we have to listen to that song the radio that first week like well it's still everywhere now it's everywhere but no one's moaning about that are they not in a bad way like we're still listening to it we're still singing it it's still in our minds we're still probably going to go and buy the album it's doing its job Whereas I think quite often we think we can only post once about something on social. We can only mention it once and then everyone will know about it and we we can't possibly mention it again because we might upset some people. Well, I'm sorry, but if Adele can have her song played six bazillion times in a day and people are still going to go and buy the album, then I'm pretty sure we can do a couple more posts on social. Totally. You know, like we're not going to lose everybody. The next thing that she did, well, this might not have been in the right order. In our sort of terms, it would be a waiting list. But with hers, it was the pre-sale, wasn't it, of her album? Concert. No, the the cut of the album. Like you could pre-buy the album when you bought it. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah. So if you were on like Apple or what have you, you, and you're buying the the single, you could actually pre-order the whole album. So you'd pay for it, I, I suppose, but you wouldn't get it until it comes out. 
And that I think nice. works really well as well. So like if you were launching a course or something like that, you don't have to have it all built. You can pre-sell it. It's the same as product, isn't it? It's not just launches for things like courses. If you've got a new product or something, you can totally do the same. It's exactly the same principle, isn't it? Yeah. Make sure people want it. Yeah. Before you like, you know, go and create something. Obviously, yeah. There's loads of things. Out, but... Like I've pre-ordered loads of things recently. It seems to be something that certainly a lot of e-com brands are doing more of. So yeah. And then really what you just said about the concert, you could like, yeah. sign up to a pre-sale list, couldn't you, for the concerts? So you could get early access to tickets, yeah. which is, again, creating that FOMO. But as well as, as creating that FOMO, she's, she's listening to her audience and she's giving people what they want. Like if we're going to go and buy a single from Adele and we're then going to buy her album, the next logical thing that we want is to go and see her live. We want to go to her concert. So what is the next thing, thing in your customer's journey that they need? that they want to buy from you. What are you giving them? Yeah. It's the first thing, a lead magnet that helps them with something. And then the next thing is like a mini course or a training. And then the next, the final thing is that they come and hire you. What is that? You know, what are all the stages? Have a think about how those fit together and give people what they actually want. Yeah. I think Dale totally. does that so well. Yeah. And also there was like exclusivity, wasn't there? Because if you get on the pre-launch, then there was only a certain amount of tickets available. We were both quite lucky and got some. Thank you, Laura Davis, for queuing for me. <laughs> but there, there wasn't like, you know, 25 nights at the O2. It was a couple of nights at Hyde Park and that yeah. was it. Yeah. Yeah. The FOMO was was real. Yeah. That. If you put a limit on like a workshop or something that you're selling, that could work potentially really well if you're doing the, the whole sales piece well. So, and really to just touch on what you've just said there, the overarching element is that she's not afraid to sell yeah. or her team isn't afraid to sell. And and I think that's a lesson that we all need to listen to really. You know, it's easy for us to go out and put some value, share our expertise out there. But actually, we need to sell. We need to sell more. We're not here just for the fun, are we? We're not here as a hobby. We are here to win new clients or yeah. sell more workshops or what have you. And and she does it. She does it well. She's not afraid to sell. That's the whole premise of everything she is doing. And as much as we think that she's just this amazing artist, at the end of the day, she's she's a business, and yeah. she has sold, and she's sold really well. And like I got totally sucked in. The amount of money that went on my credit card that day, she sold her ticket was quite scary. But I was totally kind of drawn into it because of everything we've discussed. Mm. And to me, I felt like. Every single person I knew would have been on that wait list, would have been queuing to get the tickets, would have got, got the tickets. But actually, when I then got the tickets and we're talking to people, they're like, oh, God, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't. But it goes to show that not everybody is seeing the same stuff. To, to me, I felt like everybody should be seeing everything because of how much of it was around. But yeah, it just worked so well. Yeah, so, can so I just well. point out, no one gets cross when Adele sells on social so why do people worry so much about selling? Like, there's this big myth out there, and I think you've spoken on the podcast before, about how you shouldn't sell on social media and it's like mm. not a sales platform. 100% you should sell on social media. You should have no worries at all about selling to your audience that you've, you know, you've built on there and giving them what it is that they want or they need because that's why they're following you. They're not following you because you give away free stuff. Well, that is one of the reasons that they've obviously found you, but they want more from you. So by selling to them, you're giving them what they want. Like she sold the concert tickets to us. That was exactly what we, want, what we wanted. And if she hadn't sold and we'd found out that other people had got these tickets, we'd be annoyed because it had been all been like, you know, on the down low, we'd missed out. We'd be upset. But because it was it was right in your face, you know. And it was exactly what we wanted. Exactly. And if we didn't want to buy, we didn't have to buy. We wouldn't have unfollowed. Yeah. We wouldn't have changed our minds about Adele because she dared to sell on social media. Mm. yeah so and it's like you know people worry about things like well if I if I do something and not everybody can afford it or not everybody can make that date um I'm just going to upset people well there'll be plenty of people who can't who couldn't afford a Dow ticket it's like Jesus like even I quivered over like pressing pay because it's not cheap and there's plenty of people who obviously can't do the only two days that she's doing but that hasn't prevented her from from being just Look, these are the dates I'm doing. Mm. If you know, and and, th and those people who can't make it aren't going to suddenly hate her. No, and no. you know they're just they just accept that that's that's life. So you're never going to be able to 
please everybody, but you shouldn't let that stop you. No, is it? You know, striving for what it is you're trying to achieve. But also, it doesn't matter if people can't afford what you're selling. It just means they're not necessarily your people for Mm. whatever it is you're doing at that point. Because people who couldn't afford to maybe to go in the golden circle or whatever it's called at Adele's concert would still go and buy her a single that costs like, you know, a couple of quid. Yeah, yeah. That's that's their their buy in. That's their level of thing that they yeah, some people at that time. Exactly. Or some people just don't want that, do they? So it's like it's like the equivalent of somebody doesn't want to come on a workshop, a live masterclass, for example, that you might offer, but that doesn't mean that they're not going to buy a you know an audit from you or a strategy from you. It, it's just not everything is right for everybody, which is why we all need to have a variety of different products or services that meet a range of different people's needs depending on what they want and it doesn't always that's not necessarily always down to price you know some people are really really confident and really happy to play around on their own social media so they don't want a social media manager they kind of even know what they're doing so they don't want the workshop but they would probably value from having you know investing in a strategy for example so there's loads of different kind of lessons that we can learn in that about how to make sure you have an answer for lots of different problems. Yeah. And I think also, like this probably isn't the case for Adele because most people already know who Adele is. But if they had just come across her in this launch and they'd just heard that one song, that wouldn't be enough for them to go and spend a lot of money on a concert. They need to know more. They need more time to get to know her, to get to know her music, to go and look at what she's done before, to make sure that she actually is this really good singer that everyone says she is. Hmm. And so then they might go and buy the next album or go to the next concert. So it's yeah. just about building up that that relationship, isn't it? And it's really interesting because I actually don't like Adele's music. <laughs> okay, random. <laughs> Truth bomb. And don't get me wrong, I I'd like I like sing along to it and and think I am the next Adele. I don't hate it, but it's not it's not the type of music that I would normally buy. Why, why, sorry, why are you going to a concert? I'm but, so now. But no, because I like her as a person. Right. And I think as we've kind of grown up with her, I just I just love her kind of journey. I love <laughs> like everything she I just like everything about her. I think she's a brilliant person. Someone I'd love to go out and get drunk with. I think that we would be best friends if she if she knew me. And I went to her concert last time and I absolutely loved it. Not just because, like, don't get me wrong, she's an, an amazing singer. Like, I don't, I'm not, I'm not knocking her. But I just loved, I loved the performance of it. So, which is why when I, I knew she was going to do another concert, I was like, right, well, I definitely need to book because I just enjoyed the experience. But actually, I won't buy her album. It's just not the kind of me. Or do, do people buy albums? I don't know. I'll buy her album. Oh, will you? Yeah, I'll buy her album and I'll have it on the car. Not that I ever go anywhere in the car at the minute, but oh yeah, I'll buy it. I've got all her previous albums, oh, but so I am I'm an album buyer. Am. Oh, see, I'm not. I've just got Amazon Music and just yeah, listen Yeah, see, I think it. you need to be an album buyer. And I think obviously mm-hmm. people's, this kind of goes to like people's buying habits change as well, don't they? So you need to give people what they want in the format that they want it. Like yeah. I will still buy an album, but there's probably plenty of people out there who won't and yeah. who will listen on Spotify or, you know, yeah. like Amazon Music, wherever you just said. So, yeah, it's also offering people different things in the different format that they want to consume it in. Like yeah. some people love to uh, join live workshops, live masterclasses, don't they? Whereas other people would rather watch a replay. Yeah. And it's just, you know, giving them whatever it is that they need in the right format. Yeah, yeah, totally. Loads of different ways that people want to consume information, isn't there? And we were talking about this the other day and it's just trying to make sure that you answer, you know, answer the, those various different ways with, you know, whatever products you want to sell or services you want to sell. Yeah, definitely. So I think we can learn a lot from Adele, even if we don't have her millions and her advertising budget and links to Oprah. Well, yeah, but it doesn't cost anything to go live, does it? It doesn't. It doesn't. It might cost a little bit to go live with Oprah. I'm not sure. I don't know what her fees are these days. Okay, just to recap then. So we have discussed really how... Essentially, Adele has had a sales funnel. <laughs> yes. And, you know, we all talk about these things and you hear the term kind of sales funnel and in these stages of a of a sales process. Um, and they're often over complicated, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. But they don't have to be. And they don't have to be blazing 
this is my top off funnel. <laughs> this is my, people don't know where they are on that, that kind of journey. And I think it's really important that we learn from that and we understand how we can kind of replicate that within our business as social media pros. Yeah, definitely. And so we're going to be hosting a live masterclass next week where we're going to take you through all of the key steps that you need to have in place in your business so that you can attract and win your dream clients as a social media manager. So if you are frustrated with your business at the minute, maybe you're attracting the wrong kind of leads, maybe people are questioning your fees, maybe you're frustrated because you want to increase your income, but you're a little bit worried about putting people off if they can't afford you. If any of that is happening with you at the moment, or maybe your clients are just taking the mic and they're, they're texting you at seven o'clock on a Sunday night, all of those things, then this masterclass is going to be perfect for you. It's a live masterclass. We're going to put all of the details in the show notes so you can come and grab your space. It's only £27. So it's absolute bargain. And we would love you to join us. If you've got any questions about it, then obviously get in touch. You can ask us anything. You can sign up now. The link will be in the show notes. And in the meantime, I really hope that you've enjoyed sort of going through how Adele has created her own sort of sales funnel for this launch. And we'd love to know what you think. So we'll see you in the next episode.